Hello, hello, I'm Brutton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. In today's video, we'll delve into another high yield topic on the biochem section of the MCAT, the muscular system. This is a crucial part of human anatomy responsible for various essential functions. As you prepare for the MCAT, it's important to understand the muscular system's complexities. So let's jump right on in. Beginning with the functions of the muscular system. While there are many, many types of functions, three of the most important critical functions involve support and movement, blood propulsion, and thermoregulation. Muscles not only provide the ability to move our limbs, but also ensure stability and balance for our bodies. Additionally, muscles like the heart are responsible for pumping blood throughout the body, while others aid in maintaining our bodily temperature. Skeletal and striated muscles are under voluntary or somatic control, which allow us to consciously control our movements. These muscles are typically multinucleated, meaning they have multiple nuclei, and appear striped if you look at it under a microscope. Striated muscles can be further characterized into red and white fibers depending on their functionality. Let's first take a look at red fibers. These are also known as slow twitch fibers, and they support oxidative phosphorylation and are found in dark meat. These fibers are essential for endurance and can work for extended periods of time without fatiguing. In contrast, white fibers or fast twitch fibers are active and rely on anaerobic metabolism. This is found in white meat. These fibers are responsible for quick and powerful movements, but fatigue more easily. The next major type of muscle we wanna look at are called smooth muscles. Smooth muscle is the contractile unit found in organs and structures like, bl like blood vessels, the gastrointestinal tract, and the uterus. It is under involuntary or autonomic control and it is uninucleated, meaning one nucleus. Smooth muscle can exhibit myogenic activity, which allows it to function independently of the nervous system. This feature is vital for processes like digestion and regulating blood pressure. The final type of muscle you need to know for the MCAT is called cardiac muscle. This is the contractile unit of the heart. Cardiac muscle is the contractile tissue of the heart. It is under involuntary or autonomic control. It is usually uni uninucleated, but can sometimes be binucleated, Cardiac muscles can display a myogenic activity, and its cells are connected by what are called intercalated discs containing gap junctions. These gap junctions enable the rapid spread of electrical signals throughout the heart, ensuring a coordinated and efficient heartbeat. I just really briefly want to talk over sarcomeres. These are the basic contractile unit of the striated muscle, consisting of thick myosin and thin actin filaments. So, so troponin and tropomyosin help regulate actin-myosin interactions. Sarcomeres attach end-to-end -to, -end to form myofibrils, with each myocyte containing many myofibril. And a myocyte is that muscle cell. Then we want to look at the structure of a, sarc of a sarcoplasmic reticulum. The sarcoplasmic reticulum is a calcium-filled modified endoplasmic reticulum. The sarcolemma is the cell membrane of a myocyte, while T-tubules can connect to the sarcolemma and carry signals. So when I introduce these concepts, we will have a full length video on these explaining exactly what they do. But I just want you to have the context that these are involved with muscles from this video. Now we've covered all of the essential aspects of the muscular system you need to know for the MCAT. In future videos, we're going to dive more deeply into some of these topics, such as the sarcomere and T-tubules. I want to thank you so much for watching our video on the muscular system, and I will see you next time.